We welcome everyone to New Fountain Methodist Church. Now everyone please find their seats and let us prepare our hearts to worship. Good morning. Today's going to be so fun, y'all. I'm so excited. You see how half my hair is now gray? Because this day has finally arrived. This is the Utes today. If you have not, or if y'all didn't know, today is Youth Sunday. And so uh, we are so grateful that we have such a big youth uh, that's joining us today. So um, if you would like, please rise if you fable and we'll sing our first songs, Oceans. My soul will 
rest in your embrace I am yours and you are mine thank you all good morning new fountain you may be seated <laughs> We might we we might be up and down today. We're gonna we're gonna please take please take n note of the announcements and the bulletin on the screens and in your Wednesday e notes. We've invited all to please. We've invited all to please fill out the attendance book at the end of the aisle. <coughs> if you are a first time visitor, welcome. We have a gift for you after worship. There's gonna be some announcements. I just wanted to say next Saturday, on the 6th of May, then Glenn Reef and I will be going over to a special called annual conference meeting for the purposes of ratification of our disaffiliation. So that's when the delegates to annual conference vote, and um, so we'll be presented for ratification. And so we'll be able to announce that outcome next Sunday. And so I would like to lead us in a prayer for, for that, proceed, that proceeding. So please pray. Loving God, we are thankful that you have given us a call. A call to go about doing your work. And we have been led to this time in this life of this local congregation that we have chosen and we are ready. And so we know that you precede us to this time of ratification vote. We know that you will be there and then we pray that your will be done. In Jesus name we pray, amen. I believe Melissa had a announcement, there she is. Good morning, y'all. It's that time again, time to prepare for another adventure of VBS. In six weeks, we're gonna meet Miss Goldie Retriever, the pet expert, and learn how Jesus cares for us. But we need your help to get this done. We are in need and some volunteers. If you can help, please see me. You can email me, you can call me. Um, you can also start registering your kids now online. Um, we're gonna be passing out that um, website and the QR code and the bulletins um, and I think there was also one in the newsletter for y'all to see so if y'all have any questions let me know you can let Kristen know as well great thanks y'all and I too have an announcement does anybody else have an announcement because I have one okay so today is the day uh, it's youth Sunday we are having a barbecue and I'm gonna just kind of kind of go through what's gonna happen so we're gonna have um, church this morning we're gonna have Sunday school and then after Sunday school, we're going to meet in here and have our uh, barbecue lunch, if y'all um, want to join us. And then after that, we're going to go out over here, and we're going to have a kickball tournament. I am not an expert. I have no idea what I'm doing. But I feel like it's going to be a lot of fun, okay? It's going to be, um, one, it's gonna be an, a one-game elimination game. They're going to be 20 minutes long. Um, there's going to be music. I think there's a jumpy castle for the littles. The littles can have their own game. We're just going to find out what happens. So anybody can play. So if you didn't have, if you're not on a team, that's okay. What's going to happen is, is when we meet out there, I'll have a side with all the teams, and then I'll have a side with people who want to play, and we're just going to feed you into those teams, and we're going to have some fun this afternoon and enjoy this beautiful weather, enjoy fellowship with others. Today is all about glorifying God and uh, being joyous, and ha and I just I pray that um, just. A lot of fun today. A lot of fun with our fellow uh, brothers and sisters in Christ. So um, that's what the that's what it looks like. And in my brain, the movie is awesome, y'all. I can't wait. Um, and saying that we're doing a sermon a little bit differently today. 
Um, I want to thank all the families that sent in videos, and um, I want to go and saying that apologize to some of the ones that I didn't get on there because the enemy was on today. Let me just tell you. So, um, but we we win, right? Jesus is Jesus already won that battle. So, um, there are going to be times where the volume is up and down. We just do what we can, y'all. So I hope y'all enjoyed today's sermon. And um, let's see. If that is not all, go ahead and you can finish your line there, ma'am. Now let's please wave to our TV audience and greet the offer each other a sign of peace. All right. Good job. Top of the morning to you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you today with humble hearts. We praise you for your goodness and mercy. We thank you for your many blessings in our lives. We also thank you for the people that have been placed in our lives to help us grow into the kind of people we are called to be. We ask for your guidance and wisdom as we go through this church service. Help us to open our hearts and minds to hear from you. It is, it's in your mighty name that we pray these things. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing for the entry of the light of Christ. It's 
your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise we pour out our praise it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise to you only in your praise our hearts will cry these bones will sing great are you Lord and all the earth will shout your praise our hearts will cry these bones will sing Y'all would like to be seated as we do the prayers of the people. Okay, so for the joys, Safe Travels and Burl Sister is doing great. Praise the Lord. And now for our concerns. For Pam Higdon, Lord, hear our prayers. And for Bonnie Keller and family, Lord, hear our prayers. And for safe travels for Bonnie and Kathy Collins on May 8th for my mom's surgery. Lord, hear our prayers. There's one that's in cursive. I don't have my glasses, so, uh, Habe, will you hold this so I can read it? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, uh, for Chris Warner, who had uh, surgery Friday to remove a melanoma, Lord, hear our prayers. For John and Sherry for a safe and relaxing vacation, Sherry will begin another series of chemo when she gets back. Lord, hear our prayers. And okay. There we go. Heavenly Father, we are grateful for the grace you give us every day, and we ask that you continue to bless us with comfort and peace. Help us to remember your presence in our lives at peace at all times and help us to trust your love for us through all circumstances. We pray these things in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please rise for the reading of our affirmation of faith. I believe in God, God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in, and in Jesus Christ, Christ his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Mary of Mary, suffered under the house of Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried, on the third day, rose from the dead. 
Then you into heaven, and sit at the right hand of the God, Father Almighty. From this you shall, shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. All right, will the children please come forward for the children's message? And I can't wait for this one. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, we are weak and he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. Morning, kids. Dressed up today. Do y'all know what I am? That's right. A shepherd. A shepherd is a person who looks after sheep. What do you think this is? That's right. Two for two. <laughs> this is my pasture where my sheep live so I can take care of them and feed them. Uh oh, I seem to have lost one of my sheep this morning. Sheep tend to do this a lot and I must bring them back to this safe pasture so they are not harmed by any other animals. Okay, let's be real quiet to see if we can hear him. <laughs> Sheep William, Sheep William, it's okay. I'm here to take care of you. <laughs> the sheep know my voice because I am a good shepherd and they trust me. Now let me go get my sheep so I may lead him back to this good pasture. Now you're safe, Sheep William. <laughs> so have y'all been talking about a shepherd in y'all Sunday school classes lately? <laughs> yes, we all have. In today's scripture reading from God's true word, where, we can, where can we find God's true word? Yes, the Bible. We read that Jesus is like our good shepherd, and we are the sheep. If we follow Jesus like a good shepherd, he will lead us to a good pasture. He will feed us and nourish us. Like a good shepherd, he will search after us if we are lost and rescue us. And we can listen for his voice when we feel lost. We can trust Jesus as our good shepherd. He is our gatekeeper and always watches over us. Let us pray. Dear God, you are the good shepherd. Thank you for taking care of us. Thank you for providing for us and protecting us. Help us to follow you and to listen for you always. We love you, Lord. Amen. William, William. <laughs> Will the ushers and greeters please come forward? bow your heads with me. Lord, thank you for all the things that you give us, and now we have a chance to give back to you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.
as we sing our doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and May be seated. Almighty God, okay. Almighty God, we give you thanks for the gifts that have been given for this church. Amen. Please remain standing for our scripture reading from John chapter ten, verses one through ten. That was my fault. I tell you the truth, the man who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The man who enters by the gate is the shepherd of his sheep. The watchman opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his sheep by name and leads, hang on, when he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them and his sheep follow him because 
they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus used to use this figure of speech, but they did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore, Jesus said again, I tell you the truth, I am the gate for the sheep. All who ever came before me were thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. He will come and go out and find pasture. And find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. May the Lord bless the reading of these words. You may be seated. Good morning. I'm just going to jump right in this morning. So does anybody remember the sh Sam the Sheepdog and Ralph the Wolf from Looney Tunes, Saturday mornings? <laughs> Poor Ralph, he was always uh, confused and mistaken for Wiley Coyote, probably because both of them offers, often suffered the same fate in most episodes. For those, of us, for those of us who can remember Saturday morning cartoons, most episodes would start off with Ralph and Sam literally clocking into their jobs. They'd greet each other, morning Sam, morning Ralph, then it was game on. Sam with his long sheepdog bangs would sit perched on a hill, keeping watch over sheep-filled pastures. Meanwhile, Ralph would spend his day plotting attempt after attempt to steal sheep while he envisioned them as scrumptious meals. Just when it looked like Ralph was about to have success, Sam would suddenly show up on the scene and send Ralph to his perilous demise. So what does this have to do with today's reading, Rob? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> Except that they both had sheep, thieves, and watchmen. Y'all are a smart group. You can draw a parallel on your own. So here we are between Easter and Pentecost. Jesus has risen from the dead, appeared to the disciples and others several times, while continuing his teaching before his imminent ascension into heaven to return to the Father. The disciples are flabbergasted and still questioning where Jesus is going and why he must go. So why are we taking time this week to go back to some of the pre-crucifixion verses from John. I did not confer with Pastor Steve on this, but I think, just like the disciples, we need to be reminded of the why of Easter, the main reason why Jesus just did what he did. I know sometimes I can act like a dumb sheep and need some shepherding myself. The chapters preceding today's uh, reading Covers, covers several stories of Jesus teaching in the temple, court, excuse me, temple courts and other places, while slowly but sure, surely revealing his divinity, which caused much commotion and constant questioning by fellow Jews, especially the Pharisees. The religious leaders were so upset with his teachings that, that were making them look bad that they were more focused on stoning him to death than they were realizing that the prophecies of their forefathers regarding a Messiah were being fulfilled, and he was literally standing right in front of them. John 9 is all about Jesus performing a miracle of healing a blind man that gets bounced out of the synagogue by the Pharisees for proclaiming Jesus as the Savior. Jesus then chastises the Pharisees for being spiritually blind because they saw and did, did not believe. I heard it said last week by Pastor Levi Lusco like this. When you go to a movie, it's going to be a movie theater, 
you don't go just to sit and watch the previews, do you? I mean, that's the time when you go get the popcorn and the butter and you go to the restroom. No, you go to see the main show. The Pharisees were so blind, they could not see the best movie ever streaming live in front of them. They kept wanting to continue to rewatch the trailers. If I put a subtitle on this message today, it would be, don't get stuck in the trailer. One of the prophecies being fulfilled was from Ezekiel regarding a, com regarding a coming shepherd. I will place over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he will tend them. He will tend them and be their shepherd. In verses 1 through 6 of today's reading from John 10, Jesus is talking to the Pharisees, once again in a parable. In these first verses, Jesus references several main characters, the shepherd, thieves, and the gatekeeper. In those days, shepherds would bring their sheep into enclosed fields or sheepfolds at night to protect them from wild predators like Ralph the wolf, the weather, and thieves. These folds were typically made of stone walls or branches that were several feet high. Depending on the size of the pen or fold, it would not be uncommon for several shepherds to house their flocks together. The watchman was usually a hired servant that would allow or deny passage for a shepherd and his flock into the pen. His responsibilities also included keeping watch at night for thieves and wild animals. In some of the smaller pens, it's believed that the shepherds themselves would lie down in the opening and serve as the gate and protector for the night. So how did they sort out all the sheep in the morning when they were all mixed up like a shepherd's pie? The shepherd trained his sheep to recognize his voice, just like William. <laughs> or they, they would even use a small pitch pipe. So when they heard his voice or his pipe, they would recognize it and follow him out of the fold. Shepherds were very confident that sheep would not respond to another's call. So we asked the children and the youth some questions about God's voice and their perspectives on thieves, robbers, and shepherds. between a thief and a robber, I think they both take what doesn't belong to them. <laughs> so, you, you know what the little kids say? What? That a thief steals, like, money and a robber will come and attack you. <laughs> <laughs> when I pray. All the time when I'm praying to him. All the time? When else? When I'm asleep. All the, All the time. When do you hear him? Right now. Right now. Whenever I'm really stressed or I have a lot of pressure on my shoulders. I hear God's voice whenever I feel troubled or down during the day. I don't know when I can listen. <laughs> <laughs> No Did you know if you eat popcorn, you won't fall asleep? Yeah. Pop. Sometimes if I'm doing something wrong and like I know it, then God will like nudge me. Like, Is this right? Are you sure? <laughs> what she said. It's all good, right? It's all good. All right, I got a little story for you, Eggs. When Jennifer and I were first dating in the mid-90s, she brought me home to Hondo to spend some time with her family and friends. 
Although I was at A&M, I never heard of Hondo, nor knew where it was located. I was not raised in the country, but I was not a city slicker. I was an army brat who grew up all over the place. Prior to my first visit to Hondo, I had already met Jen's mom, Denise, as well as her middle sister, Rhonda. And I think I was pretty well on the way to winning them over. However, I had not met her father, Clyde, yet. I was fairly certain he was going to put me to the test upon my arrival to Hondo. He did not disappoint. <laughs> After the initial meet and greet, followed by a family supper, he invited me to join him early the next morning to get the full country living experience. We spent the next few days clearing brush, mending fence lines, <laughs> digging post holes in rock, hauling hay, etc., etc. But I did not waver. I'm not sure if it was on the first trip to Hondo, but one of those early bonding experiences, Clyde introduced me to sheep shearing and elasticating. I'm, not I'm pretty sure he did that by not so subtle design. As we were finishing a cup of coffee while driving down to the pasture in his old brown Scottsdale, he leaned his head out the window and started whooping and hollering in a loud voice with the word sheep mixed in. I was thinking, what the heck is wrong with this guy? <laughs> but more importantly, what was in his coffee that was not in mine? <laughs> then I looked down towards the end of the pasture and saw a flock of sheep sprinting along the fence line towards our location. They literally recognized his voice and were excited to see him. We then went over to the pens and he brought a few in at that time to manhandle him. Then he got a big smirk on his face and he said, now you have to catch them. You know that scene from Rocky where as part of his training, Mickey throws a live chicken on the ground and tells him, Rocky, go get it. Yep, that was me chasing sheep. At one point I was diving and stretching and trying to grab at anything I could get, get hold of. Clyde and Mike were both there rolling with laughter as they watched the show. Eventually I got the hang of it and we spent the day shearing sheep and Clyde would lead them out one by one. So to make a long story short, those sheep trusted Clyde with their life. They did not trust me. Because he's our shepherd and we're the sheep and he is like our gate. The sheep represent the humans and the shepherd represents God and the devil could be the robber, and Jesus is our shepherd, and we're the sheep. God's people, and the people who God's protecting, I guess. All the people on earth. What does the shepherd represent? God showing us the right way. Um, we. And who's the shepherd? Jesus. Because he, because he's the gate and we're the sheep, like he protects us all the time and he never lets us go. Uh, sheep do things without thinking first and sometimes we do that too. And then the shepherds help them like think, they think like for them and help them like Jesus. guide them on their way, yeah. Jesus is the shepherd. Jesus used shepherd sheep and thieves in the story because it was an easy way for people back then to understand what he was trying to get across to them because they understood that concept most. To show um, the difference between the followers of Jesus and the demons that are trying to take them away from Jesus and into a different religion um, and cast them to go to hell. I know I can trust God because he has told me I can and he has expressed that through his actions throughout my life. Because he's our father. Um, mommy and daddy and Charlie and Max and everybody else in the world. 
got to have faith. Because we do. I just know what Levi says. <laughs> what, did, what did Levi say? How do you know you can't? How do you know you can trust God? Why can't you? They get it, but the Pharisees didn't get it, right? All right, so in today's reading, after verses 1 through 6, the Pharisees still don't get what Jesus is saying in this parable. So Jesus leads off in verse 7 and 9 with one of two I am statements in this story. He says, I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. He will come in and go out and find pasture. While verse 11 was not part of our reading this morning, Jesus uses a second I am, and he says, I am the good shepherd who lays down his life for the sheep. Back to verse 10, he says, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. My friends, those verses right there, they encompass the why of Easter. The message of salvation and abundant eternal life. Jesus knew on Monday, Thursday what had to be done and did not stop it from happening. He knew the only way to save his sheep and the sheep yet to come was to lay down his life for them. Jesus became the sacrificial lamb on that Passover to remove the shackles of religious law, to fulfill Old Testament prophecies, to atone for all sin and to grant direct access to God. He became the gate from the sheepfold, as well as the shepherd that leads his flock to pasture. When he gave up his last breath on the cross, remember that the curtain in the temple that separated the Holy of Holies tore from top to bottom. Okay, who died for us, Memo? Jesus. Where does Jesus live? In heaven. To die for our sins so he could have a pers more personal connection with us. And so we could bring our personal issues to him. So we can talk to him openly and freely. He wanted to tell us to tell life for a long time. To save us from our sin. Because you're um, supposed to. What? And he loves us? Yeah. And he wants to die for our sins. He could save us from our sins so we could go into heaven and live forever with God. Accepting Jesus as your Savior. By following Jesus. Mm -hmm. You ask that God and you ask Jesus to live in your heart. Rest in peace. Peace. <laughs> I don't know. Heaven. The past represents God's kingdom, whether it be here on earth or in heaven. I think the pasture represents heaven and a peaceful and calm place. Well, that's a great question. So when I was a freshman at Texas A&M, a student from Campus Crusade from Christ presented the salvation message to me in the following format. And yes, these next slides are a little bit childish in nature, but hey, it's Youth Sunday, so let's go with it. <clears throat> so there's a great chasm that separates man from God. This chasm is sin. Anything that distracts us from our relationship to God is sin. There's no amount of good works that one can do to bridge that great divide. Good works are not the justification for entry into heaven. There is one way and one way only to span the chasm, and that's through a resurrected Jesus. His outstretched arms on the cross created a bridge, the gate,
to cross the divide and lead us into God's pasture. John 3.16 said, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. Eternal life in the pasture. John 14.6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes through the Father except through me. That's Jesus, the gate. John 14, 2 through 3, I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me so that you also may be where I am. What a great example of a good shepherd. Friends, it's by grace that he offers this free gift to us. And it's up to each one of us to choose to accept that gift or not. When we do accept, then we are filled with the Holy Spirit, who guides and directs our lives. Then, good works come naturally as part of the fruit of the Spirit. And in turn, we follow the footsteps of the original disciples and participate in the Great Commission by spreading the good news of salvation through Jesus Christ to others. Ephesians 2, 8 through 9, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith not by works, so that no one can boast. And this is not from yourselves. It is a gift from God. So I'd like to wrap this up this morning, referencing the final story in John's Gospel out of chapter 21. Jesus has not yet ascended into heaven. So setting the stage, Peter and some of his other disciples are enjoying the Lake Tiberias Airbnb a place where they're guaranteed by their guide to catch fish and then have it cooked and served to them at breakfast on the beach. Finally, they realize their guide is Jesus. And after talking and eating breakfast, Jesus pulls Peter aside for a little chat. Peter is most likely still embarrassed and upset with himself for denying Jesus three times that night. He was arrested and turned over to be killed. Staying with the powerful sheep analogy, Jesus looks at Peter and asks him three questions. I'm going to read these three questions. When you hear Peter's name, I want you to replace it with your name. Peter, Rob, do you truly love me? Feed my lambs. Peter, Rob, do you truly love me? Take care of my sheep. Peter, Rob, do you even love me? Feed my sheep. Peter answers him all three times with a resounding, yes, of course, Lord, I do. While this was most likely Jesus's granting Peter forgiveness, it was also Jesus asking Peter for a final commitment, a commitment to go lead the Great Commission. My friends, it takes a commitment to believe, accept, and live a Christian life. Are you willing to make that commitment? after what Jesus did for us. That Good Friday, he was arrested, accused, mocked, beaten, flogged, and shredded to the brink of death, then forced to hike across town through mobs of haters with a cross on his back, only then to be nailed, those nails, to that cross and suffer an excruciating death. And for why? He did it because he is I am. He is the gate to eternal life. He is the good shepherd who laid down his life for his sheep. He did it for you, and he did it for me. Um, I want Jesus to know that I love him so, so much. Your heart. How do you feel about Jesus? 
um, loving us. I want Jesus to know that we have faith in him. And I want him to know that we love him with all our hearts. I want Jesus to know that I have accepted him. And I feel excited and comforted by his presence. Thank you were my mommies and all my dads. Thank you were all my dishes and, and all my dress. Thank Amen. you, Father, for all the wonderful things that you do for us. And uh, please heal the people that need you. And uh, thank you for everything. Amen. Wonderful job, Rob. And kids, thank y'all. If y'all would please stand so, so we can sing our closing song. We're going to end it with a toe tapper, y'all. Father, let your kingdom come. Father, let your will be done. On earth as in heaven, right here in my heart. Father, let your kingdom come. Father, let your will be done. On earth as in heaven, right here in my heart. And give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us, forgive us. As we forgive the ones who sinned against us. Forgive them. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Let your kingdom come. Father, let your kingdom come. Father, let your will be done. On earth as in heaven, right here in my heart. Father, let your kingdom come. Father, let your will be done. On earth as in heaven. Right here in my heart And give us this day our daily bread Forgive us, forgive us As we forgive the ones who sinned against us Forgive them And lead us not into temptation But deliver us from the evil one oh, Let your kingdom come It's yours, it's yours, all yours Are yours, it's yours, it's yours, are yours, are yours forever and ever. The kingdom is yours, it's yours, it's yours, are yours, are yours. The kingdom, the power, the glory are yours, it's yours, it's yours, are yours, are yours forever. Father, let your kingdom come. Father, let your will be done. On earth as in heaven, right here in my heart. On earth as in heaven, right here in my heart. Very nice, y'all. All righty, it's time for the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his conscious, consciousness upon you and give you peace, both now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. And as we uh, go about our days, um, we want to give the Lord thanks always for the blessings and opportunities that he gives us daily and we want to go out from this place like this light and shine our light of, of our love for Christ onto others and let us be like shepherds to others and bring them um, to God with our bold actions as we show our love and our trust and our faith to the Lord amen, amen. all right so we're gonna start it off with the bridge it's exciting stuff you ready and y'all have no idea what I'm talking about but this is the bridge the song It's yours, 
It's yours, all yours, all yours The kingdom, the power, the glory are yours It's yours, it's yours, all yours, all yours Forever and ever the kingdom is yours Father, let your kingdom come Father, we'll clap for you Will you done? On earth as in heaven, right here in my heart. On earth as in heaven, right here in my heart. Y'all have a blessed day, blessed week. Go enjoy some barbecue after Sunday school. The older Sunday school kids, will y'all meet me right here, please? The younger ones, y'all go to your Sunday school classes. And if we could have help setting up tables so that they're ready.